And now on to international news. Israeli tanks have been positioning themselves on the border fence with Gaza as the military build-up continues amid relentless bombardment of the besieged Palestinian enclave. Tens of thousands of Palestinians have been displaced after Israel ordered 1.1 million residents of northern Gaza to evacuate to the south amid a looming ground offensive. At least 2,329 Palestinians, including 724 children, have been killed and approximately 9,700 wounded so far in Israeli airstrikes on Gaza. A number of people killed in Israel stands at 1,300, more than 3,400 wounded since Hamas launched its attack on southern Israel last week, last weekend. The Israeli military said it was striking targets in Lebanon after a missile attack by Hezbollah fighters killed a person in its territory. Meanwhile, U.S. aircraft carrier USS Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group joins USS Gerald R. Ford Carrier, which earlier arrived in the Mediterranean, in a show of support for Israel. Iran has warned Israel of a huge earthquake of resistance if it fails to cease its war crimes against Gaza. President Joe Biden on Saturday underscored U.S. support for efforts to protect civilians amid an Israeli siege and bombardment of Gaza while condemning Hamas and saying the Islamist group does not represent Palestinian aspirations for self-determination. Biden's comments uh, during calls with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Palestinian Authority leader Mahmoud Abbas came as Israel appeared poised for a ground offensive against Hamas militants in Gaza. Biden spoke with Abbas for the first time since hostilities broke out a week ago and condemned Hamas' brutal attack on Israel. Biden in the call also pledged full support to the Palestinian Authority in its efforts to bring humanitarian assistance to the Palestinians, particularly in Gaza, the statement said. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antonin Blinken on a crisis tour of the Middle East met Sunday with the de facto ruler of Saudi Arabia, which has put on hold normalization with Israel. Blinken has been touring the region since Hamas fighters infiltrated Israel on October 7 and killed 1,300 people, sparking a massive retaliatory campaign targeting the Islamist group in the Gaza Strip that has killed more than 2,000 people. Russia's ambassador to the United Nations has called for a humanitarian ceasefire in the Gaza Strip and Israel while blaming the United States for the continuing conflict. The Russian draft resolution presented to the UN Security Council on Friday calls for an immediate ceasefire and the secure release of all hostages and strongly condemns all violence and hostilities directed against civilians and all acts of terrorism. The draft resolution also calls for humanitarian and aid access and the safe evacuation of civilians in need. The draft was given to the 15-member council during a closed-door meeting on the conflict, according to unnamed diplomats. Chinese envoy Jai Jun will visit the Middle East next week to push for a ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas conflict and promote peace talks. In a video posted to its official social media account on Sunday, CCTV said Jai will visit the Middle East next week to coordinate with various parties for a ceasefire to protect civilians, ease the situation and promote peace talks. Beijing's top diplomat Wang Yi called on Saturday for the United States to play a constructive and responsible role in conflict and urged the convening of an international peace meeting as soon as possible to promote the reaching of broad consensus. A new earthquake was, has hit western Afghanistan, 
Several days after two large tremors in the region killed more than 1,000 people. The U.S. Geological Survey says the magnitude 6.3 quake has struck near the city of Hirat. It was a depth of 6.3 kilometers. At least one person has died according to local health authorities. Another 100 are being treated for injuries in the regional hospital, the World Health Organization said. More than 90% of those who died in the earlier quakes were women and children, the UN's children agency, UNICEF, said. In its report, the USGS said the epicenter of the latest tremor was 30 kilometers northwest of Hirat, Afghanistan's third largest city, close to the Iranian border. And now some other international news in brief. The United Nations Refugee Agency for Palestinians has said water has now become a matter of life and death for people in the Gaza Strip after Israel cut their water supplies. More than two million people are now at risk as water runs out, warned the UN bodies. Thousands of people have marched in cities across the world, including New York, London, Sydney and Japan, to support Palestinians and raise awareness about Israeli bombings in the Gaza Strip. President Vladimir Putin said Sunday that Russian forces had made gains in the Ukraine offensive, including in Andivika as symbolic industrial hub. Indigenous Australians have called for a week of silence and mourning after a referendum on giving them more political representation was rejected by the country's white majority. I want to recognize that the a rare celestial spectacle appeared over the Americas on Saturday. The lights of much won't be seen again in this part of the world until 2046. Millions were within the path of the annular lunar solar, uh, annular solar eclipse as it created a ring of fire in the sky over the North, Central and South America. No improvement was seen of the dengue situation prevailing across the country over the last, as over 2,000 have been infected and 11 died during the last 24 hours. A press release of the Director General of Health Services said among the dead, eight were in Dhaka and three were outside Dhaka. 2,363 dengue patients were admitted to different hospitals across the country during the last 24 hours. Among them, 537 dengue patients were hospitalized in Dhaka city and 1,826 patients outside Dhaka. Now news on weather. Met Office in its weather forecast till 6 p.m. tomorrow said rain or thunder showers is likely to occur at one or two places over Rongpur Division. Day and night temperature may remain nearly unchanged over the country, said Met Office. Now news on sports. Pakistan beat England by 69 runs in ODI Cricket World Cup in Delhi today, chasing a victory target of 285 runs. England scored 215 runs, losing all wickets in 40 overs, three balls. Earlier, after losing the toss, Afghanistan batted first and scored 284 runs for all wickets in 49 overs, five balls. Rahmanullah Gurbaz and Ikram Ali Khil scored 80 and 58 runs respectively. Before we end, another look at tonight's headlines. All districts of the country to be brought under rail network as people show keen interest about rail journey. Government not ready for conditional dialogue with BNP. Dialogues to be considered if BNP withdraws 
conditions, says Ubaidul Qadir. The NP takes Jewish side by keeping silent about Israeli massacre in Palestine, says Dr. Hassan Mahmoud. Imported eggs to reach country very soon, facilitating consumers to buy eggs at affordable prices. One minute symbolic silence program observed in Dhaka to increase public awareness about sound pollution. Israel readies troops for invasion as Gaza civilians flee and death toll of Palestinians surpasses 2,000.